I think Trump panders to us, tries to pander to Christians. You think Trump is a fraud, but Biden saying he's a, a Catholic? Well, I, I might not. have in that video said that I wanted to punch <laughs> you in the face. I think that Paul and Morgan are kind of being legalistic here, even if they don't realize it. I'm like a public school Christian. The people that come for me are like the homeschool Christians. <laughs> Were you homeschool? After voting for Biden, it's been four years almost. Do you feel like good about your vote? I'm older and I think the earth is billions and billions of years old and- What?! I am a worship leader. I have very high standards when it comes to who's leading worship up on the stage with you, how they live their lives off the stage. I mean, Economy-wise, the border. You live in Texas, bro! You live in Texas! Uh, don't, get, don't get me started on the border, man. It's a very powerful thing to believe that you're the one that has the exact line of convictions and things figured you're out. It's, 100 percent You're correct. so correct. Of like, this is where the line is drawn. It's very powerful to believe that. It doesn't always make it true. The division between Christians online is immense. In this series, we will press into tough conversations, disagree with love, and humanize the person behind the screen. Join us as we discover the real lives of some of the most influential Christian figures. Hey, we're Paula Morgan, and we can't wait for you to watch this episode of 24 Hours With. We had the opportunity to spend the day with Josh Benson from Church Chad. Huge shout out to Josh and Sydney for being down to film episode three while being one month into living with their new baby girl, sleep deprived in the trench of new parenthood. Keeping it real, we've had online disagreements in the past. I may or may not have wanted to punch Josh in the face. So the question now is, can we squash our beef face to face? We talked through hot topics like Trump versus Biden, pro-life versus pro-choice, modesty, edgy Christian memes, and much more. Grab the fire extinguisher because this beef is sizzling. Do you want a soda water? Oh, yeah, I'd love like that. We got you. We're soda water fiends. Oh, Same. Oh, my goodness, dude. Would oh, you like this. ice in a cup? This is great. Pure. I've never had. Oh, no. Well, I want to know, this is like totally unrelated to content, just like what has been the most surprising thing to become a dad for you? <laughs> two, this, you. Just two dads kept kicking Just hanging out, man. I knew I would, okay? But like I'll experience the the full range of the human emotion by like 4 a.m. Like yeah. I wake up and I'm tired and I'm grumpy and she's crying and then I'm like holding my daughter and she's like cooing because I'm feeding her. I'm like, oh, you're so precious. I love you. I'm like crying and then she just you know poops her diaper and I'm like, oh, but you're still so beautiful. Hey, we've only been here less than an hour and I can tell this man is a good dad. Yeah. So if Thanks, we man. disagree on yeah. everything else under the sun. <laughs> I will still, he's, he's a good dad. I will put that on my... <laughs> I'm kidding. No, it's awesome. Look here, Morgan, you just got, you got me and Josh cutting the breeze about fatherhood. <laughs> Two moms. Get over there. Two moms. Next to <laughs> So tiny. So Luca was 9.3 pounds, so I don't know what it is. <laughs> You're like, I don't know what an 8 pound baby looks like. My sister just said the same thing. Uh, oh, that's her food. Here, you can eat first. Because you have to do that. Okay. I won't say no to that. <laughs> All right, so we've had to kind of adjust morning routine film because, uh, well, Josh over here gets up at 3 a.m. and we were not gonna show up at his house at 3 in the morning, so. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I've noticed is we were in San Antonio last episode and they were like, we gotta get tacos like for breakfast. Really? Like that is not a common thing in Kentucky. And really? Oh, here, and you guys breakfast like, tacos, tacos are like tacos. number one. <laughs> It's dope. that and oh, donuts nice. like we had in our little hometown. I grew up in a town of like 5,000 people. East Texas, very not diverse city. And we can talk about that later. But there was mm -hmm. one like Vietnamese family. They ran the donut shop and they were the nicest people ever. And they are so good. You said that uh, the town you grew up in was not very diverse. Mm -hmm. Would you consider it one of the racist towns of America? <laughs> Would I consider it like most racist? No, but that's like part of my upbringing is like there's so many white people. Uh, and it, talking about like Christianity, the line between being a Republican and being Christian was super blurred. It's like yeah. you can't be a Christian if you're not Republican, mm -hmm. you know. And I grew up until I graduated, like believing that. It's like yeah, like 
we're all white folks, this is how things go. We, I think I graduated with two black kids. Going to college like from that was when, kind of around the time when Trump ran. And so I see all these people who, again, we're living in, in white person heaven, I guess. They're like our, our church's <laughs> leaders or whatever. Yeah. And they're super nice or whatever. They, ne they never said anything, whatever. But to your point, Paul, it was like, sometimes they would kind of slay, say something under the radar and you're like, oh, that sounds interesting. Then Trump runs and like all these guys, men and women that I looked up to in our church, all of a sudden just kind of start saying the quiet part out loud. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, like y'all are kind of racist. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't really want to be a part of this. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? We had a guy in our town who, black guy, um, he's like a youth pastor in San Antonio now. Best dude ever. And Trump starts running and he kind of voices concern about that. And then the town that like cherished him so much, like, you know, this is, like, we love this guy. All of a sudden they're like, you know, you're not welcome at my house anymore. I don't know if you would call it like reformation or like deconstruction or whatever. But around that time, I really kind of looked in the mirror and, and was like, what have I been taught growing up, like church wise, that was just like veiled Republicanism. Church Chad got started. So I'm just doing the financial advice thing, going to church like I love Jesus. And then COVID hits and we're all bored out of our minds. I'm still in East Texas at the time. And I just start making TikToks. Nothing really takes off. And then I start doing like the Chad persona, which is just like making fun of stuff that I would say in like my early Christian days or like guys in college. Like God told me you're my wife, babe, you know. It is so hard to it find is good guys. It's so today. hard finding Good guys. I know, right? We don't want much. Like, I just want a pastor. We're not asking for much. A pastor, a uh, buff, huge 30 inch biceps. Yeah, washboard abs. Obviously. Um, um, has to be making six figures a year. Yes. I mean, a million be preferable, but I don't want to work. <laughs> <laughs> no. Can't ever uh, talk to a girl before me. No, if he has held sure. another girl's hand, that is not okay. It. Oh, Jay, good to see you this Sunday morning, buddy. Oh, you like the fit? Yeah, man, I just got added to the worship team. So I'm the backup, backup bass player. And I had to look the part. So I went and got a jean jacket with skinny jeans and suede boots. Yeah, I'm kind of a big deal now. But it's not about me. It's not about me. It's all about him, man. Speaking of worship music, did I see correctly that this weekend you were listening to that new Drake 21 Savage rap album? Buddy, no, you can't call yourself a Christian if you're listening to that kind of demonic music, man. You must be in a dark, dark place. Hey, I'm going to be praying for you diligently, all right? All right, Slugger, get out of here and go repent. Next day I wake up, it had like 300,000 views, uh -huh. and now we make stupid little uh, cringe videos, you know, making fun of the cringy Christians. I'm guessing you've seen a little bit of this series. Yeah, yeah. You know that we don't shy away from the, uh, we don't shy away from the challenging conversation. Right. How are you, just be totally honest, are you nervous that we're gonna like come after you? I, I wouldn't say nervous, because uh, I think you guys, you know, you know, your your goal here is to have tough conversations that I don't think you would have flown out here if you thought that I was going to like just kind of stroke your ego and be like, I was just kidding the whole time. We're at, <laughs> no, you know? we're not having that. So exactly. So deep. What I was going to ask. Yeah. Be completely honest. First impressions of Paul and Morgan. You've made a few reactions. Of uh, course. Pushing back on us at times. What, what was your first reaction when you saw our content? Um, I think first video was. It was a video that I never even posted. Uh, cause I think you guys were talking about sex. Okay. Uh, I, I really, if I'm being completely Just honest, be totally I thought it honest. was like, I thought you guys were being super legalistic. Okay. And I feel like some of the, the videos that I have posted, it, there's still kind of like that legalism aspects where I'm like, like, I don't agree with much of this at all. Yeah. Well, I am excited to dive into those, uh, <laughs> those areas. Let's give our first impressions here. Let me. You can say douche, by the way. <laughs> Did you watch our response video talking about like cussing and music? And we, you responded to us, and then we responded to you again. I don't think I knew you guys responded. <laughs> well, I, I might not. have in that video said that I wanted to punch <laughs> you in the face. Oh, that's okay. You're not the first. When you do get like people upset at your content, yeah. what is kind of the general things that they're upset about? Probably just that. So I think the the thing that Christians love to throw around is like, you just want to be a part of the world so badly. You know, you want to 
you know, just toe the line with sin so badly. The best thing about being married is my wife is like my accountability kind of with, I'll show her like, you know, babe, what do you think about this? And there's been times uh, when she's like, you can't post that, you know? And I'm like, oh, oh that's so funny though. <laughs> like when I'm making it. fun of like a, a super Republican and they think like the clitoris is a, a liberal lie or whatever. She said, I can't post that. I thought it was funny, you know? And so she, I, I've got that accountability and my wife is like super strong spiritual Christian. And so already knowing like if she gives me the green light, I know that we're probably in a good spot. So when I see comments like that, it's just kind of like, I, I, again, I kind of take it back to like, I feel like you're just being a bit legalistic. And I think that that's the hot button. Like you're just trying to be like the world, you know, are you really saved Josh, if you're posting this? And it's like, you know, we're talking about again, like can women wear bikinis at the beach or can someone right. say a cuss word in, in a certain context or whatever. And it's like, it's I think you're taking it a bit far. It's not a issue necessarily. Right. <laughs> I'm excited to get into, yeah, discussing more of those specific topics. Friends. Josh has friends on Fundy Snark. The Reddit hate group. Yeah. So literally, it, I, I knew about it, and they like posted a couple of my videos, I think, and then I saw that they're not huge fans of you guys at all. Oh no. Uh, that's, so <laughs> that's to put it in a nice way. Do you have a group of people that comes after you? Uh, oh, oh, we'll call it like this. I'm like a public school Christian. The people <laughs> that come for me are like the homeschool Christians. <laughs> Were you homeschool? <laughs> <laughs> like if you went to school and your, your high school taught about evolution, then you might like my stuff. Wait, so are, are, are you are you telling me you believe in evolution? To an extent, like the development of like species, like you can evolve. Like what's the the, the Darwin's uh, theory? You know, beak, of... whatever. Like the beak develops because the finches or whatever. Okay, so you're you're ultimately food. telling me mi microevolution. Micro. Wait, I don't I don't think we like true came true, like, from monkeys. I do believe that okay. God created. You know, Adam and Eve. Good, good. You know, in the garden. So you're saying the adaptive, the, the uh, yeah, like adaptive, adaptive evolution. evolution. Wait, do you but believe within sp within species though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Within, within species. species. Do you believe that? Um, are you old Earth or new Earth? New Earth, baby. No way. I so new I did Earth, not baby. know that was even a thing. Really? Until after college. I guess that's what public school will do to you. Public school. <laughs> that's so true. <laughs> <laughs> Which, I mean, we were we were always taught, and I I still I'm old Earth. I think the Earth is billions and billions of years old and what god manufactured you know this beautiful creation story and so you know. I've, I've had these type of conversations before but what's your short answer to how you reconcile the bible saying you know seven days what's a what is a literal day for god is it 24 hours i mean throughout the rest of scripture though it it seems like it's pointing to a a, a day like a we're, literal we're used 24 to hour uh -huh. period I, I would disagree, but again, I, I don't think that I found in scripture that it points to, yeah, God did this in 24 hours and then he did that. I think it's kind of a beautiful story, if you will. Like he, he's so intentional. Like he doesn't just, you know, all right, there's water. It's like this beautiful creation of like, watch how I can like make this happen, like with my paintbrush. And it takes some time, but. But there is yeah. things in scripture that he's done immediately. Yeah. Like, I guess creating Adam. Fingers. You're like, all right, Adam's here now. Boom. He's got Eve. Boom. I guess here's my biggest question. Why wouldn't your natural go-to be to just take the Bible at what it says, which is, you know, so you guys are seven days. Are you guys biblical, like, li literally? Like, do you take it literally and you say, this is literally what it says, and that's, like, what I will take it as? I will. T um, obviously, there are portions that are clearly poetic. There are mm -hmm. parables. Um, but I've heard people like really push back on on people that are more on the literalist side And I'm kind of like if it appears that we should take it literally I'm gonna take it literally if it's pretty clear that it's not that and it's more poetic then I'm I'm fine with that Where, where do you then because I think that the earth shows signs of like age, you know, and you bring into like dinosaur fossils mm -hmm. 
um, are you one of the Christians that believe? I've heard this before, dude. I've heard that there are Christians that believe that Satan put dinosaur fossils into the ground to confuse us. What? Okay, I don't believe that. Okay, okay. So you guys weren't you weren't that homeschooled. I've never heard that. Never before. heard that. I've, I've seen someone to confuse Satan. Before. You dog. Satan's like this looks like a weird. <laughs> so like just crazy stuff like that. But I believe that dinosaurs existed, and I, you know, of course we learned about it in public school. It was a great time, man. Uh, <laughs> You know, and, and this dinosaur is this old, and you know, this this is this period, if you will, okay. and the earth was, you know, in the ice age. Yeah, I'm no, you know, Skull, and, and neither am I. And you, I mean, I'm guessing you're probably not a big Ken Ham guy, the Creation Museum. I don't know who that is, no. Okay, he's, he started the Creation Museum. You guys come to Kentucky, and we'll take you to the Creation he, the Museum. The Ark Encounter yeah. in okay. Kentucky? Ken Ham is someone that really defends through, like, you know, science and logic and scripture defends young earth and i tend to to fall into his camp fair enough but i, I wasn't uh public schooled so no i just think it's <laughs> i i thought it was so crazy when i first heard it but also it's not like uh oh you're not a christian if you're not old earth anymore. so it's kind of just right. something fun to throw around <laughs> love it dude love wow. it <laughs> dude this our uh, trunk it does this cool thing where it doesn't stay up so you gotta like pop it up in your head <laughs> some deep conversation on the course, but let's let Josh focus in on hole number one. <laughs> okay, yeah, keep left. For my first shot, I'll take that. You're a natural <laughs> He said I'm a natural. So I thought it was interesting, Josh, you were talking about growing up and then you saw people within your church and your community hardcore like christian trumper mm -hmm. kind of inseparable almost and I, I do feel bad about the uh the black dude that you said started getting some real yep. heat for articulating differing views i mean that's a shame from like the church community but i will say i posted a reel i don't know if you remember this a while ago back when i was posting more of these types of reels and it said something to the, to the effect of uh i do not see how a christian could vote democrat mm -hmm. in today's political landscape. Hmm. Funny. Yes, but not funny. Ha ha. Funny weird. And you actually commented on it and you, you pushed back on me fairly hard. Yeah. And in your pushback, I can read the pushback, but you actually said in 2020 that you voted for Joe Biden yeah. and that Biden, his morals lined up more closely with your morals or something to that effect. Sure. I'd, I'd love for you to, to expound. I mean, just off the bat, it's tough to vote for a guy that has trials already, if we're just calling a spade a spade, you know? Um, I think the big thing, and it's kind of a cop-out that a lot of Christians lead on, is the uh, abortion take of like, oh, well, you know, I, I'm, I'm adamantly pro-life. I can't vote for, you know, a Democrat. And I think it's interesting. This was something that Andy Minio posted back okay. in 2016. So I don't know if it's still accurate, but... It was like the previous 30 years of presidency, and basically the point was that regardless of whether we had a Republican or Democrat in office, from like 1970 to 2016, the abortion rate went down. So you look at something like that, it's difficult for me to then look at Trump and Biden and say, oh, well, me voting for Trump is really going to push down, you know, again, playing kind of devil's advocate because I feel like the pro-life topic is what gets a lot of Christians. Absolutely. It's tough for me to sit here and see that and then be like, oh, well, I have to vote. My hands are tied. Otherwise, you know, abortion rates are going to jump through the roof. Our patron, Anthony, actually said, ask Josh, how could you vote for someone who openly calls for the free state funded slaughter of unborn children? And your answer, free state funded. Free state funded. I mean, Joe Biden, I mean, is, is radically. He's he's pro choice, pro -choice. radically pro choice. So he's not pro abortion he's pro-choice in giving kind of that option. Now, again, we, we can get into kind of the personal view of things. I'm somewhat, I would say, a fan of the separation in church and state in the sense of, of course, I love voting for Christians, but, you know, as a Christian representative, it's, it's very interesting to sit here and say, okay, I elected a Christian individual. I now expect the United States of America as a whole, where we do have freedom of religion, to now adhere to a, a Christian principle. You hear what I'm saying? Do you feel so, like saving saving preborn babies is a, a Christian principle? I mean, Christians certainly seem to take that uh, 
kind of side more so than others. Um, now, again, back to Anthony's comment, Joe Biden pro-choice as opposed to calling for, you know, the slaughter of unborn babies. I, I don't feel as though that's what he stands for, if you will. I can certainly see how someone would say that, you know, the Democratic side is a bit more pro-choice. But again, you look at the facts. Bill Clinton had fewer abortions under his presidency than George uh, H.W. did. You know, Barack Obama had fewer abortions. So we see kind of this legislation, and certainly they can, you know, pander to their sides. I have to look back. I'd have to look back at that in statistics. I, I would say certainly now we're seeing less under Biden because of things that Trump helped put into place, including less the, that are documented, uh, including less the, that are, the uh, you know, pro-life Supreme Court justices. And, and like, don't get me wrong. Like personally, you know, I am pro-life. Like Sydney and I, we get pregnant at any point. We're, we're keeping the baby. Good, good, good. But uh, again. We're talking about now the safety of mothers. If there's a point, and this, we're, we're diving down the rabbit hole now. I love it. You know, if, if the doctor comes to us however many weeks into the pregnancy and he, he basically says, hey, Sydney and Josh, if you try to have this baby, your, your wife's going to die. I, I think there's some pro lifers that would say, doesn't matter. Which that's a very rare, rare case. Case. percentage of yeah. abortions happening because yeah, of that scenario rare. is tiny. This tiny. might be a hot take in instances of when a woman is and she gets pregnant from that I have a very difficult time, even as a Christian, standing and saying, yeah, you have to keep that baby. Um, so the baby should be punished by the sin of someone else? That's a very nuanced issue. And I don't think that there's anything I could say to like give a solution for it, but I I see Christians you have, you have empathy. This. You have empathy for the- I mean, dude. You have empathy for that situation, I have as, as do I. As, in, in that as situation, I. I think that the mother who, who didn't even have a choice in having sex she sure. she did not have that choice i think she does deserve to have a choice and that really sucks to say because it's a very very nuanced and just awful situation there are a lot of stories of women who have been raped that got an abortion and come back and say it actually made my healing process a lot harder because yeah. i got an abortion because i chose violence to balance out violence and how like that is actually not a wise decision mm -hmm. Well, so there are statistics. Hey, we're talking about this. We're two guys. Yeah. You're a woman. You know. Should, should you, I be I'm swinging sure, the camera on? Yeah, I'm sure Morgan. You probably. Yeah. It would almost be more constructive, maybe, to have you and my wife talk about it because you two are people that can have babies. You know, and yeah. it, you know we're kind of just yapping it up like, yeah, this is. But I say all that. I don't believe my votes, direct, Democrat or Republican, has a direct effect in, honestly, the amount of abortions that are had or not had. I think that it's kind of lame that a lot of people feel handcuffed to vote for a guy that's like on trial for a number of things, including because oh, at least it'll save a couple, you know, babies potentially when that might not be the reality, you know. And that's just again based on you know the numbers. Well, let me ask you this. Okay. Let's say Trump gets in office, Supreme Court, you name it, abortion is illegal now. Okay. Do we think that now the number of abortions, like? just stops people stop having abortions i would say i mean you look at places conservative run states where it is uh the abortion laws have gotten a lot more strict and the amount of abortions is significantly decreased now here's here's the the catch-22 sure the amount of reported abortions right okay now i've seen things on like tiktok women can make abortion cocktails they can do it themselves now it's very i mean again you call a call abortion what you want to call it but a woman doing that to her own body without a medical professional, that's now very unsafe for her. Um, again, I'm not saying, you know, right or wrong, but uh, people are still gonna have it. It's kinda like the gun rule. Like, Republicans love gun. Hey, if we take away guns, the criminals are still gonna get them, right? He's saying it in a hillbilly voice. I tell you what, bro, that's how I've always heard it. I'm, I'm from the sticks, man. But <laughs> if we take away, if we, you know, outlaw abortion, they're not gonna go away. Now all of a sudden, just safer abortions are, going to go away and people will still I mean this is horrible to say people are still going to get a coat hanger people are still make a, an abortion cocktail what are they going to do I think um, a lot of people especially the younger generations will set their kind of moral compasses based off of what is the law of the land what is being espoused from the top down that impacts and greatly affects a lot of people's views on well what is right or wrong when it comes to abortion so when you get a, a president, and I'm, I'm not saying Donald Trump is the, the poster child of 
pro-life, even though I do think he's a pro-life president, at least he, he says that and he's put things in place. When you put someone in office who is standing for pro-life versus someone who's pro-choice, pro-death, it is going to impact the way that the, the common man, many common men, many Americans see this issue. Yeah. That, that's another reason why I would say, man, like, for, it, it's a big deal to have someone who's pro-life in office for someone who's pro-choice. But you keep, you keep doing something kind of interesting in your conversation there in, in that you're equating instantly pro-choice with pro-abortion or pro-death. Okay. When I still do believe women are very intelligent and, and women, quite frankly, probably have a much better emotional uh, kind of feel than men do. And so I don't think that giving women the ability to choose necessarily is taking a pro-abortion stance, you know, or pro-death stance. It's just saying I, in, in these instances, talking about again, like women are raped, there's incest situations. I mean, dude, there's a, it's a nuanced topic. I, I just think the people on the other side who are very against pro-choice are not necessarily saying like, women shouldn't get a choice to do anything in life, but they are saying, it should never be a choice to end an innocent baby's life. Like that should, you should not have that choice. Like no one should have the choice I, to end a baby's life, no matter yeah. what the circumstances. And that is like a hard thing to say, but like cases are very, very low when it comes to abortion. Like that is the least, like one of the lowest causes of why a woman gets abortion is almost always circumstances slash life, uh, like where they are in life. They're mm -hmm. just not ready to have a baby. Like, that's the number one reason women are getting abortions and so I think like for people who are pro-choice or pro-life they're not saying women can't have choice but this just specifically is not so a choice to be made like you don't ever choose life or death over an innocent being well and then this and thank you for saying that yeah. this then gets even more into the weeds of okay so now let's say we have a woman who below the poverty line okay she's yeah. she's pregnant she lives in a state where she can't you know make that decision she has the baby now that baby is in you know an orphanage or what have you then this takes it i know i'm kind of going down a rabbit trail but yeah. i think that one thing that kind of sucks is that we see this really rah rah pro-life on the republican side of things mm -hmm. but there's not that same call for you know change or reformation in like the orphan side of things because let's be yeah. honest a lot of these women if they do have to stick with it they're not going to keep the baby yeah it's going to be an orphan yeah. and you now we're talking about quality of life we're mm -hmm. talking about a kid that doesn't know where their next meal is coming and again i know that that's not the answer you know, and that's yeah. not the ultimate way to say like see pro-life is wrong well and I but think that's just a whole other part many, of the nuanced issue many yeah. pro-lifers are agreeing with that that let's do what we can let's put our money let's look for ways to make the adoption process to make the foster care systems healthier. In Lexington, Kentucky alone, the, t the wait list to adopt a child is two years long because really? there's not enough people like giving up their babies for adoption. And I would say that that's probably in most states is like you hear, I've been waiting for over a year to adopt a baby. And so it's like people are choosing to abort their babies when they don't even realize like they're not getting the information of there is help mm -hmm. out there in the world. like. There are believers and non-believers that have created um, facilities and yeah, uh, just resources that I think, yeah. like if you go into Planned Parenthood, you're not gonna hear about those resources, which is a pretty common thing that women say, like, I didn't know that that was an option. I didn't know that I could do this or that. Back to the original thing, I don't think that your faith hinges on who you vote for. I think that this is probably the most nuanced topic of really what divides, like, oh, this is why. If anything, I think that we could agree on it's kind of a call for little government in a sense because the situations in which you know whether like we talked about uh, you know mom's life is in danger is it convenience the situations are so specific is it really appropriate to have a nuance or not nuance but a, a blanket no just across the board um because you know kind of the same side of that we've heard stories my wife is very passionate because she loves you know foster kids and stuff We've heard multiple stories about, you know, mothers that are being forced to carry babies to term that are like endangering their lives. Um, like they love the baby, they want to hang. It's just like, and so I think that that's just all that to say. That's why I lean to the choosing side of things because 
I love America. I love freedom. Yeah. This freedom is one of the most difficult ones to talk about because it's at the expense of two healthy parties, you know, and only one of them can speak. Yeah. But yeah, it's kind of where I land. Abortion aside, after voting for Biden, it's been four years almost. Do you feel like good about your vote? It was. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's less fun. Like Trump, I'll say this about the guy. He's an idiot. He's so funny though. Like, you know, the, the, the speeches he would give and the things he would tweet. He is comical. But all that to be said, uh, you know, I work in finance, so I'm around kind of that side of things. I do think that uh, I made the right decision. Um, there are a couple of things that Trump had kind of in place, tax bill wise or what have you, that are still, you know, more or less his doing. And, uh, you know, I, I don't really have an opinion pro or con on that part, so to speak, but yeah, um, yeah I do think I made the right choice. Oh, I like that. That's, get in there, get in there. Oh, come on back down for <laughs> Golf claps, golf claps. Good shot, dude. That looked good. Morgan, come to this side of it. I'm gonna try to beat Josh's. I like looking at your feet. Shout out to Josh for being willing to talk through this stuff. Like this is sure. real heavy stuff. A lot, uh, a lot of people are thinking through this. You had commented on my reel, and one thing you said was, um, "I voted Democrat in the past election because Biden somehow, as a person, aligned with our values better than Trump." Mm -hmm. Sad but true. What are some ways that Biden aligned more closely with your values? Um, I think, dude, seeing how Trump treats women is a big one. Okay, so you just say Biden treats women better than Trump? I, I would argue so. Maybe, maybe so. I mean, maybe, I mean maybe again, so. I don't know either of the guys personally, but I would say you see some of the things that Trump is standing trial for, um, some of the things that, you know, Sydney and I have kind of talked about. She mentioned, like, her trauma, so it definitely is something that now it is a bit, I'm a bit more passionate about, I guess you could say. Okay. Um, I think also, in my opinion, if we're being real, I think Trump's kind of a fraud. Okay. Uh, you know, you get a guy up there that's almost claiming Christianity, See, pander to us like we're stupid. But you think someone... you think Trump is a fraud, but Biden saying he's a, a Catholic, but su I, super pro-choice. You think, think he's panders, not? A... I think Trump panders to us, tries to pander to Christians. Uh, then you look at that interview where the guy's like, "Well, what's your favorite verse or book of the Bible?" And he's like, "I like both Testaments, Old comes. and New. They're both great." You know, <laughs> and, and it's just like he, he panders, like, "I love Jesus," and they're like, "Well, what's your favorite verse?" I can't say I have one. They're all great verses, really. That's what I say. They're all great. <laughs> and you're like, dude, like you're not authentic at all. Uh, so I think he's a fraud, and I think that he's. So you think limit. because I, I hear you kind of going after Trump and saying I, I don't like this about Trump. I feel like Trump is this. Mm -hmm. But as far as Biden goes, though, like what good fruit is coming out of a Biden presidency I mean, he for be, a he, Christian? He do be sniffing hair for sure. Okay. Um, <laughs> Okay. I will say this uh, about Biden, and again, I don't know these guys personally. I know what is reported. I saw a video the other day of Joe talking about losing his first wife okay. uh, and kind of how that affected him and like the love that he has for his sons. And so if nothing else, I can say, well, hey, at least from what I've seen, Biden hasn't cheated on his wife. He's loyal to his family. You know, again, I can't do a deep dive on his, uh, you know, personal life. He's definitely family. loyal to his family. Loyal to Hunter, <laughs> not wanting to. Oh, is that to do with the drug problem? Yeah. <laughs> but I'm not voting for Hunter Biden. I'm voting for. So Joe. You, you will, like, you will, you do plan on voting for Joe Biden again. I mean, economy-wise, the border. You live in Texas, bro. You live in Texas. Oh, don't, get, don't get me started on the border, man. <laughs> I, I've got some opinions on that too. You don't think Trump is better for a secure? Or are you saying you, you like? You're okay. I don't. I don't mean to put words in your mouth. I don't, I don't want to board, but you, you're okay with the way the border is being handled. I'll never forget. That this was right after the 2016 election. I go down to uh, Houston to hang out with a buddy of mine from college. Down south, getting closer to the border. Getting close. So he's. Uh, both of his parents were illegal. Okay. He's legal because he was born in the United States. He's telling me like, Josh, it's it's terrifying. I can't. Uh, you know, my mom can't go get groceries. She's afraid she'll get deported. And. All this time they're talking about how he's like, yeah, since Trump's been in office, it's been a bit more revamped. People are telling me to go back to my country. And he's like, and I'm legal, I, you know? Okay. And, and so watching two illegal immigrants take, you know, this gringo in, 
and how hospitable they were first of all changed my perspective because i think you get the straw man painting of like illegals are bad and they're all going to kill us and sell us drugs and it's this loving family who sought refuge from like the cartel so i'm very much so even though many many people that want a secure border aren't saying like oh we're scared of all the illegals and stuff. It's just more like we want to a secure, in the right way. Yeah, it's it, your it, secure country where the immigrants will come in legally. Well, and do I, you, I mean, do you right think that's way, too much to ask, though? I don't think so, but I think that reformation is being sought a bit more on the democratic side. The right way, to your point, Morgan, can take up to like years, decades. And if a family's trying to seek refuge from a cartel that's trying to kill them, they don't have years. So again, this is like nuance. Like, is there a correct answer? You know, should we just open the border up or should we just completely, you know, neither. I think there uh, definitely is nuance, but you would say you like the way that Biden is handling the border, which is more obviously more empathetic and let's, you know, let them in than these governors saying, give them $10,000, the ones that came in illegally. You, because of the empathy aspect, you're more okay with that than Trump who might cause a little more div divisiveness and uh, the illegal immigrants are feeling kind of nervous the, of deportation and they're getting blah blah but he's at least doing more to secure our border you'd fall more in line with biden's approach i, I think so long as there's a, a, a vetting process still but again this is um there's a guy walking up sorry okay and then yeah we'll, we'll continue where did it go <laughs> Get in there! Uh, okay, that was a good shot, but did you see my shot? That was pretty stinking good! <laughs> oh! <laughs> Come on! Grand scheme of things, with the nuance involved, looking at the different sides, you agree more with Biden's approach to the border than Trump's? I don't even know if it's Biden, but I would lean more towards the Democratic approach. Um, and this is after, again, I live in Texas, you know, I, I think it's kind of comical when someone in Minnesota has an opinion on it. Uh, or someone in Kentucky. <laughs> I mean, Kentucky's Shout at out. least a little closer, but <laughs> I, I think it's ironic. Like a lot of my friends are Hispanic, a lot of friends in college, hearing like their stories, meeting people that are like actually illegal immigrants and watching how they treat me, the things that they say. Um, dude, we like went to an orphanage. Uh, one of my mission trips, like back in college, was going to an orphanage of refugees, kids that, majority of the time, the cartel sent over with drugs and said, take these drugs or we're going to kill your parents. Um, and, and just even talking with them, like with a translator, and like hearing their stories, I'm like, dude, I, I, I have a difficult time really cracking down and, and vilifying, you know, the illegal immigrants that want to come here just to for safety, for like a better life, you know. Uh, it's tough. And I think the Democratic side kind of embodies that a bit better. What about all of the violence that's been going on? At school shootings with white people? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, like a woman was just recently in Georgia. She was yeah. on a run and she was raped and murdered by an illegal immigrant. I agree. There has to be a better solution for these people who are fleeing a terrible place you know, innocent children who don't, like, yeah. who need a safe place. Absolutely. Like, we've got to figure that out. But also, like, we've got to figure out how to keep the violent criminals who are crossing freely, being handed $10,000, and then going off and committing murders. There has to be a solution to that, too. And yeah. so, like, a lot of people say, close the borders and bring these other, you know, people in who are coming in safely. Or, or legally, like, we'll help them. Like, yep. we want to offer refuge for the refugees. We want to, of course, you know, whatever. I think you see my my point with my my statement in that. It's very interesting to me, kind of the discussion around an illegal immigrant kill someone. Like we said, we should have shut down the borders. Mm -hmm. A school shooting happens where a white kid shoots the school, which is just as horrible. Yeah. And then the conversation, well, hey. It's a sin problem, it's not a gun, it's not a violence problem. So I think, to kind of go there, I think there is a violence problem just in general in the United States. Uh, and that's a whole other discussion for a whole other day, but I don't know if sitting here and like shutting down the borders, hey, now people aren't getting killed, now it's great. Yeah. Um, 
when I think that the vast majority of immigrants coming from South Korea are not killing people. They're just trying to make an honest living, which is great for the economy. All right, well, yeah. a more empathetic approach. Yeah. Let's golf. Let's golf. All right, this might be my hole. Finally, a hole to beat Josh. <laughs> I just need one straight shot. I'm gonna have to go wide open for you. You do not want to leave the door open for P.O. Oh, you snuck it. Four! 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 <laughs> so much for you beating Josh. You trying to kill that family? <laughs> hey, Silver Light, that was a good shot. You almost <laughs> killed a family, but that was a great shot. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh my goodness, boy. Golfing is done. We played uh, six holes. I was hoping that I could beat Josh on one hole. I got, it was very much in the realm of possibility. It was close. It was close. <laughs> but I couldn't. One time I had a nice shot, but it hit that, that big silver pole. It hit that kid. And we <laughs> hope that kid gets better. We do. <laughs> hey, that was a good time, though. Good time on the course. Hey guys, we hope you're enjoying this episode of 24 Hours With. We have seen so much division online between Christians, and so we decided to do something about it. So here we are having real raw conversations, all for the sake of unity. But we can only keep it going with your help. If you guys are loving these episodes and you believe in the mission of this project and you want to support it, Become a patron at any tier, but if you're looking to get exclusive behind the scenes content, helping come up with questions for our next guest and get early access watch parties, we would encourage you guys to become a patron of the 24 hours with tier. Go to patreon.com slash Paul and Morgan show. The link is below. Whoa. Cold girl over here. Post me. <laughs> yeah. What was it? Chandler Moore posted like a wedding carousel from their wedding and yeah. his wife's like <sighs> throwing it back on him. I did just dancing and he, his yeah. caption was about them twerking and having a great time. I loved it. I thought it was like, yeah, man, celebrate your wife and like your marriage. So I'm assuming that the response video you made to us was just saying we're being legalistic. Pretty much. Yeah. Tagged his wife. H Grace Moore knows how to twerk. Hashtag hallelujah. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> when I first saw this picture, mm -hmm. I have to say, I was flabbergasted. <laughs> you were off the heezy. I was not okay. Look, I am a worship leader. I have very high standards when it comes to who's leading worship up on the stage with you, how they live their lives off the stage, and how they represent themselves as a Christ follower. I am like... Chandler and your wife, you guys within, you know, the confounds of your bedroom, confounds, go, go have fun. crazy, <laughs> go crazy and, and enjoy each other. Songs of Solomon level. But, but once you post it for the public to see, you're inviting other people in. Chandler, <laughs> there's our newlywed. Hey man, congrats on getting married. Can't thank you enough for letting me come to the wedding. It was gorgeous, man. Didn't want to pull you aside today, though. I uh, wanted to talk to you about the dancing that you did with your wife at the reception. You know, I just kind of felt led to come tell you that maybe you should have interacted with the Holy Spirit a little bit more. I mean, her her gluteus maximus was just on your, your space, man. And that's kind of inappropriate. Uh, we definitely didn't need to see that. Okay, now I didn't pray personally before coming and telling you this. It was just based off, you know, conviction for you. <laughs> I wanted to tell you that, you know, I hate that your marriage got started off on the wrong foot, but uh, just don't let I felt like you guys were like kind of harping on him and being like, could you believe this guy? This guy would put, um, almost kind of like shamefully, if you will. Um, yeah, I loved it. I thought the post was awesome. I understand that like it can come across as legalistic of being like, you shouldn't post that or do that or whatever. Like, I get that, but I also am like, is there not a place to call someone out who has publicly posted or done something that's like, whoa, like, bro, we're in the same, like, atmosphere of, like, being Christians with platforms, obviously, to a much higher place he is, but, like, let's, like, talk about this, like, let's, you know, question, is this being, is this being set apart from the world? And so I guess, like, what is your definition or what does it look like for a believer in general, but also a believer with the platform of any kind to be set apart? Like, what does that look like? I, I just have kind of a, the maybe biblical justification for it is 
you know, have you read Songs of Solomon? <laughs> I feel like that's biblical time Instagram, you know? Yeah. Uh, like there's one, I swear, and, and I think that scholars kind of debate it, but there is, I think it's Songs of Solomon 5. Like homegirl's talking about the guy's penis. Yeah. Uh, she's oh, I mean, like, the it, ivory like, tusk. Yeah. And it's like, she's talking about how well hung this guy is. And that's kind of, if you're that guy that's kind of sick, like, yeah, this is being Josh broadcast. Vincent. But, you know, I say all that, you know, it, it's this beautiful picture of like this <laughs> couple that's like under God. And they're like celebrating, you know, what the Lord has brought together and like the things that come with that. And I feel like yeah. that's modern day. You know, you don't need to be sitting there posting booty. Going off of the Chandler Moore mm -hmm. topic, yeah. like the one difference that we are like, have grown up with, especially in Texas. So like Texas is like, when we talk about Southern Baptists, like Southern and mm -hmm. more of those, like when we talk about the things like in sex, we've had friends who got married and then like really struggled to have sex because they felt so unclean. Yeah. Texas specifically like, churches talk a lot there's a lot of shame around sex mm -hmm. there's a lot of like there's not really celebration of sex in marriage at all and yeah. so for us seeing a figure do something like that is actually healing mm -hmm. because it's like oh this is we like can celebrate. this is what yeah. marriage is supposed to look like this is like what a healthy like sexual relationship can yeah. be yeah. in a marriage rather than you just find at least we've found a lot of stories around here where there is shame in the marriage bed mm -hmm. there's disconnect in the marriage bed and also like there's just like this discomfort to talk about it with any other christian or like yeah. find out you know like how do we even have a good sex life yeah. and so to me seeing that was like i wanted to like jump up and clap mm -hmm. because i was like yeah. finally we have people that are showing like okay like a healthy sexual yeah. like relationship and marriage is like cool i'll take that a step further even if you guys are cool going this direction that's why <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> you probably see me cool. i push back so far kind of on the, the modesty discussion because i feel like that's just we've heard it so much it, you know you got a a southern baptist preacher in the pulpit who like if we're being honest i mean that just happened that one that was like telling women that they're responsible for their own assault god dude that was nuts i bet and yeah. that was yeah <laughs> so just hearing you know the, these pastors hop in the pulpit and you know you kind of look at it and it's like i feel bad for your wife like i wonder if you, you've ever made your life like have an orgasm, honestly. And I say that because it's like, <laughs> I wonder, these pastors talk about sex in, in a very transactional manner of like, like domineering it, manner. Yeah, it exists, you know, for me, for the man, and then modesty for the women. The women just need to be, you know, covered up in this and that, and you need to never, and it, it just gets really old really quick, and you see kind of like the pastor's heart behind it. It's like, you're not really talking like biblical facts. Like you're just talking like your opinion of how a woman should dress. Well, and the biblical you know? version of modesty actually has to do more with like wealth, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so when you really break down the the like Greek and Hebrew version, it's it's less about what there's like an American version of like what we have deemed as modest and not modest. That's kind of explaining why you probably that one video of me yeah. uh, poking fun because I feel like now <laughs> it's not just pastors. It's like, I feel like any guy with a microphone now, like you weren't the first guy that I heard have a podcast and talk about modesty. There are varying yeah. levels. So there might be a bikini that is more modest than another bikini. Absolutely. As I was looking for a wife, I was like, I want a woman who is stylish and modest, who can look good in a swimsuit, but still not be showing everything. I think Michael and I both would appreciate a woman that is showing some is discretion the right, right word? Discretion? No, women? It, you are called to like think about your brothers and think about and, and try to, to help them to not stumble, to stay pure. And it falls on the guy too, to be like in the word, be asking for God's help to stay pure, to not fall into to lust. So it falls both ways. So let's, let's love each other and help each other in that way. I was looking for a wife. I was like, I want a woman who is stylish and modest who can look good in a swimsuit, but still not be showing everything. I think Michael and I both would appreciate a woman that is showing some, is discretion the right, right word? Discretion? No, women? It, you are called to like think about your brothers and think about and, and try to, to help them to not stumble, to stay pure. Me and a buddy were eating like dinner with a couple of friends and there was a guy that took like 30 minutes to explain why he didn't date a girl because he found like a bikini pic on her Insta. 
Like he's scrolling and he finally finds it. He's like, like kind of shaming her for it. And we're like, you don't have to date her, man. Just, right, it's been on. 30 minutes. Like we don't care that much. <laughs> it's interesting hearing your all's upbringing and the Southern Baptist um, stuff because I feel like growing up, I grew up in a Christian home, but I felt like modesty was like taught, but like I remember my mom taking me shopping for a bikini the first time and I was like, what? Mom? Like, no. <laughs> oh. And so like that was not ever a thing in my house and then I kind of became a woman myself and like came up with thoughts and opinions of my own. And, like, with modesty, like you said, you know, it's more about wealth and how you act and how you portray yourself and how you love people around you, biblically speaking. But I think also there is an aspect of, like, kind of what I said a bit ago of, like, how do we set us apart from the world? And, like, for me, if women who are, you know, not walking with Christ are out there, you know, wearing bikinis showing off their butt cheeks like whatever mm -hmm. i personally am like i'm not gonna do that because i want to be set apart from what the world is doing and it's not a and i want to be seen as better and higher whatever than them but it is a i want to honor the lord in all areas of my life and that goes along with my body and my body is my husband's and so i'm not gonna like show it off to the world because i don't need the world to see my body you know i think this way but that doesn't necessarily mean other women are gonna think that way um and i trust that a woman who is walking with god is going to you know seek him when it comes to like what sh what do i wear like what 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 do i you know, how do I carry myself in fashion? Like, mm. it's, you know, whatever. Um, call it legalistic or not, but I think we should be asking, seeking the Lord on literally every aspect of our life. Like, the music we listen to, the, the shows we watch. Like, seeking the Lord. Not that it's like, I have to pray for a week to ask God if I can watch Suits. Like, <laughs> but, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. I was listening to, like, this podcast with N.T. Wright. He's talking about um, the story of the adulterous woman in the Bible. And the first thing he says, he says, it's very ironic that the, the title is quite literally just the story of the adulterous woman when it takes two to tango. So it should have been the, the story of the adulterous man and woman. It's not the Bible that did this, but we see kind of Christianity almost adhere to the societal norm, even way before Jesus of like, we need to kind of shame women a bit, look down on women a bit, a bit more control on women. Like, look at this adulterous woman we need to stone. Forget the guy that participated in the set. He's, he's fine. He's just, boys will be boys. When I hear just a multitude of guys just talking, talking, and again, Paul, you were not the first one. Guys that just keep on harping like, ladies, this is how you should dress. Fellas don't want a guy that, or want a girl that dresses like this or that. When to your point, Morgan, exactly right. Like it should be kind of on every woman and man. There's a lot of immodest dudes I see kind yeah. of in the gym, you know, shirtless, yeah. you know. <laughs> it should be on every woman and man to kind of like personally just like interact with the Lord and be like, how can I best have like a modest heart posture with you? And this is kind of my personal opinion. I don't know if you find this super biblical. When it comes to maybe gender specific issues, if we're talking about how women should dress, I always lean to the side of a woman should have that conversation with a woman and like man with a man. I saw a post again on Twitter. This statement was men, you're responsible for your eyes and your thoughts, women dress modestly. Mm -hmm. Would you agree with that? Hmm. <laughs> mostly. Like, mo mostly. <laughs> because scripture is very, very clear. Jesus like, gouge your eye out, dog. Like, if you got a problem. And then when we talk about dressing modestly, see, I still hear you say that. And my mind goes to it of like, <laughs> I know. And I know you're not saying this, but my mind's like, Paul's asking, or that tweet on X is asking <laughs> women to literally like, turtlenecks in July, pants only. There's truth in that that statement. Um, but again, like, was it a man that said that? It, Probably. Yeah. I would, I would at some point, it's just like, we're always talking about women. And it's like, can men address men for a second? 
Yeah, when you're going to address just the... like, just don't, like, I would like to see one time where men hold other men accountable and don't bring women into the conversation. When are we going to address the, the Christian fitness influencer that's, like, shirtless in the gym? Because women long? are, women, yeah. like, whether we we believe it or not, like, women are constantly being, like, under a microscope of, like, what they need to do and mm -hmm. whether they ask for it or not are being told what they need to wear, what they need to do. And it's like, <laughs> I would just really like find so much peace in seeing men like make one statement, like holding another, like other men accountable to their role in Christ and their role in the church and their role with women without bringing women into the conversation. Yeah, this is good. This is interesting. You mentioned kind of specifically when men say, talk about modesty and weigh in on modesty, on women's modesty, there's oftentimes an underlying current of shame. Uh, we made that video, two men weighing in on, you know, how do we feel about women wearing bikinis? Mm -hmm. What are our thoughts on that? If we're looking for a spouse, is that something that we, that we think about? I'd be curious, Morgan, kind of after engaging now a little bit into this modesty discussion, did you feel like there was, as a female, an undercurrent of shame there? Hmm. Or, Morgan, like you, again as a female, do you agree with it? Mm -hmm. Let me hear it one more time. I was like, I want a woman to do it. So I hear that, and I'm still kind of like, I, I agree with what was said there. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to figure out where we're, are we just seeing it differently? Or where's the kind of... I can definitely see why a woman would listen to that specific clip or that video in general and feel shame, okay. feel shamed. Um, and I would say my guess is the shame that they feel is not just from this video, but it's like bringing up all the stuff that they've heard in yeah. their past growing up over a lot of time. You know, yes, I too have heard over and over. It's my fault if a guy stumbles because I was wearing something that made him stumble. Like it's my fault. I have to be careful, but I didn't grow up with I think as much as like what you were hearing like so for me like I I hear that and I'm like makes sense to me like I get it like yeah I want to honor my brothers in in Christ like I don't want to cause anyone to stumble if they do stumble and I know that I've done my part like in honoring the Lord and what I'm wearing like that's I don't take that for one second on myself but I can see many women who do because of what they were told growing up. They're like, it's my fault though, it's my fault. And so like, yeah, I don't, I don't have that upbringing or, or those thoughts in my mind. So for me, no, I don't feel shame when I listen to that. Um, there have been things in the past that I've heard from men and women that have made me feel shameful um, mm -hmm. for many different things, but that was not one of them, no. And plus too, you know his heart. Right, and yes, that's, that's the, that the, too. Yeah, the part that we can't discount, heart. you know, and it's not even, let's say, Paul, you put it like so eloquently, like let's say no one has ever said it like you did in that podcast, <laughs> like, like modern day theologian type, like people are hearing this, like, wow, he has such a way with words, you know, even then, it's the fact that we as men have like dug ourselves such a hole that even if you put it so eloquently that it's perfectly said, it's still the fact that it's coming from, here's another modesty take from another guy. Talking about that clip, it just kind of seems like, and I, I, I think meeting you, like I yeah. think you guys are like the coolest people ever. Oh, like truly. Um, <laughs> chat, clip that, chat, clip that. <laughs> so it's like, and, and knowing your, where you're coming from in that clip and everything, like it's really cool. Um, when I hear just that clip pulled apart, I hear another <laughs> podcast <laughs> talking about women's bodies, whether it's modesty or what they want them to look like or okay, what, the what shape they're supposed to be in and what they're supposed to wear. Sitting down with y'all, I don't think that you meant it like that at all. But um, like, I just hear that clip and I instantly am like, uh, why are men still talking about women's bodies? What Just if, what if I, like, sorry. No, go please. <laughs> what if I told you that like a hundred women messaged Paul and Michael and were like, hey, can you make a video on like your all's thoughts on modesty? Like would that make you be no like, kidding. oh, well, then you No have. way. <laughs> no, honestly, like that does, that does. Yeah, yeah because. That's 
when we started our YouTube channel, our following was like 98% women. And we would get so many messages and comments saying, can Paul and Michael address from women, address modesty? Can they address what you there they would look for in it, a woman it was, so it was kind of that format that. it was kind of that format of <laughs> not necessarily like i need to know exactly well, i want a man's opinion on modesty but more of like as a single woman how does a christian guy that's looking for a, a christian wife how does he think how does he feel about modesty how does he feel about going out on dates how does he feel about women making the first move so i think that just was all kind of circulating yeah, yeah. and just like leave my laundry in the dryer for like days sometimes and just pull out That's of the dryer. Scary. He's like no, immediately, immediately out. out. Like, that, I'm the same Why, well, why would you do that? Because it's like, it's like a fun thing. little way to delay folding. No, because still then so when I go to do though. laundry, then it's sitting there and I can't And if I want to like a warm, <laughs> a warm sweater. Okay, just, I will, hey, I invite the comments. I invite you guys. You, you do a load of laundry. It's sitting in the dryer for days. You get it out to wear it incredibly wrinkly. It makes no sense. Church Chad makes a lot of Christian. I mean, the, the whole focus is Christian comedy, pushing yeah. back on that Church Chad guy who's just cringe. Are you filming? All right, let's just get this over with. What's up, church home? Associate Pastor Mark here, coming to you live from Los Cabos. Wanted to thank you all so much for giving generously to let my wife and I come on this mission trip to visit the orphanage. Now, bit of an update per Mexican regulations. We can only visit the orphanage one day out of the week, so we're gonna see them next Monday. But on the remaining days of this two-week trip, we're gonna be on the resorts, praying for the workers, and just really diving into Mexican culture, usually via jet skis or golf. <laughs> Again, thank you so much for giving for this trip. That's sounding a lot more like a vacation than it is a mission trip. You guys stay blessed. A question that I gotta ask though, is there a line when it comes to, like I think of John Christ, yeah, yeah. I think of you know other maybe bigger Christian comedians or Christian meme pages or Christian content on Instagram that memes makes- for Jesus. Memes for <laughs> Jesus. Memes for Jesus. Shout out. Where'd the shirt come from? Wow. In your mind when you're creating um, a new what would you call it, skit, yeah. meme, is something in your thought process like, I don't wanna to go too far in making fun of something that's kind of within yeah. the within Christianity. Like it's, that, it's still my belief system. It's still yeah, your yeah. belief system. I really firmly believe that like, people really handle accountability best from themselves. So like, Christians wouldn't be super receptive to like an atheist being like, this is what your religion, you're right. an atheist, you don't know what you're talking about. Sure. So, I'm. Uh, one, I, I think that it's important for someone within the group to call the group what it is, right? So I think that's kind of my first part behind it. I think that there have been a lot of people that have been hurt by the church. And so my hope is like, hey, I hope this gives you some sort of healing. Like if this situation happened to you. Now the line, because we want it to be funny. That's something that's very, I would say just per video. Um, what Sunday is that again? <laughs> but if it's comedy, it's like, how close can we get to the line to where mm -hmm. it's still... Cause because do, do people write in and sometimes and say, like, you, you went too far you went, in yeah, this. You went too far. There, and like I told you earlier, like, there's videos that you've been like, you can't post that. Oh, yeah. You know? He comes to me before every... Pretty much... I mean, we pretty much bounce off, like, each That's idea. Yeah. And before he posts the video, I get a, a look at it to be like... And you're like, you can't you represent both of us. <laughs> because even for me personally, there are uh, videos that you've made, me and Jesus has made, yeah. John Christ, and I'll watch it and I'll be like, that was killer, hilarious. Yeah. And you even like pack some wisdom in there calling people out that need to be called out. But then there have been times where I'm like, ooh, that's getting kind of close to that. Spicy. Yeah. Spicy, even maybe like uh, irreverent. To your point about the line, it's like, it's not good comedy if you don't at least flirt with the line. You gotta have the line, and that's why I have my like best accountability partner who also gets humor right here. Mm -hmm. uh, because if not, I'd probably just be off the walls talking about it. There, <laughs> there are some, yeah. man, like absolutely not. But the opposite of that is just being not funny. You know, it's just suck. Okay. That's fair too. When he comes into you know a conversation, for example, like the modesty response yeah. video, like we had talked a lot about. I think you probably did an original one that I was like. 
no. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm because there's to, stuff that's scared listening. to watch that one. We have people in our lives who will call us out if we're like going yeah. too far or if, you know, something isn't hitting the mark. But also, the accountability goes the other way. It's like, we need to start telling each other, like, if your art sucks. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Whoa. Your friend's like, Hey, what do you think of this, you know, awesome song I just made? It's Christian. You just need, part of you needs to be like my, my brother in Christ. This isn't good. Yeah. <laughs> so I think the accountability that's hard, that's hard to, to do. Go, that's that, hard that, that's to do. much more difficult to do. I appreciate your thoughts there. Yeah. Um, that's very... It's a good question. That's very interesting. So Josh, does the name Sadie Robertson Huff mean anything to you? Are, are you talking about her video that she posted? <laughs> Sadie Robertson. She posts a reel of herself and either friends, a couple friends or a couple sisters dancing to none other <laughs> it ain't texas it ain't texas beyonce's what is it texas hold em? sorry it's a good song i love that song hold em. Cool. and yeah. i see you post from your church chad she was getting some heat in the comment section and you ultimately defended her mm -hmm. and so i was like "Ooh, this is interesting i looked at some of her comments and she actually came out recently and i saw you share that as well where she kind of made a statement on the whole ordeal Oh, she did? <laughs> she did. She do you remember yeah, what she... Like, she I don't remember I what she said. But she had to do that. <laughs> she deleted the post, though. You obviously feel like she should not have gotten criticism for posting the video, dancing to Beyonce. Yeah. Could you see, though, is, is there any world where someone would be right to push back on her dancing to Beyonce? Don't ask me this question. Because <laughs> <laughs> you, you've gotten it. Like, I've been a dancer my whole life, and yeah, yeah. you Ooh. can't dance to... Why don't you so dance to some casting crowd? <laughs> casting crowd! So this has been the conversation of my lifetime. I, I... So first of all, it was... Funny enough, it was Caleb that posted that story. I didn't I didn't know about it. I just check and we've got like people responding. I'm like, Caleb, what'd you do? But I agree with him. I, I agree wholeheartedly that it, it's ridiculous that she's getting kickback on... You know, a, a segment of that song where... Like, the segment doesn't even cuss. It's a um, clean version. It's a clean version. I'm, like, asking people that are responding, I'm like, would you have had the same problem if it was the instrumental? And they're like, yeah, it's still problematic. And I'm like, what, what do we want then? Um, and, and so, to answer your question, is there a world where the criticism is valid? I mean, maybe she's just throwing booty. You know what I'm saying? And it's, like, <laughs> super wrong. inappropriate. And we know Sadie's not throwing booty. And Sadie's booty. not throwing booty. No, she's like, not like, doing that. <laughs> You know, I, I just did not feel like the criticism was valid at all. I thought that people were just really reaching. They'd love to tear someone down. Like Sadie Robertson, who's literally like probably the most well-intentioned person. The fact that she used a clip that was clean, that was respectful, that was like, uh, the dance moves were even respectful. I don't even so, like, you know, I've like. I've <laughs> never seen a more respectful dance move. I know. <laughs> it was so respectful. The, the dance, dance moves were respectful. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> So I, I totally get, I get your all side. I guess my wondering in the, in the recesses of my mind is, is there any secular music artist that she could have posted herself dancing to that you would have been like, yeah, maybe for this Christian influencer, a significant Christian figure that goes and she, uh, she teaches at conferences. Teacher. I'm going to go all the way to the extreme just right. because I, I want to see if there's a world when you specifically, Josh, would say like, no. Sadie Robertson and her sisters or friends post a video. I don't think you do. You might. Post a video <laughs> of them dancing in a very non-sensual way to WAP. How do you feel about that? Megan the Stallion, <laughs> oh Cardi B, WAP. You'd have to be like, all right, Sadie, you just picked the worst song. You would support people in her comment section saying, Sadie, this is not This wise. is not a great song choice. You would I, I, I would have to relent to that, yeah. I used to do a lot of dance videos. Um, and so, like, even in those, I would always make sure that, like, as a Christian, the selection that I chose was for sure clean. But out of all the issues that, like, we as Christians should be, like, fired up about and ready to like take action over i'm like, like Sadie, Robertson Sadie Robertson yeah. doing a very <laughs> short clip with mm -hmm. nothing wrong some of the comments were just so intense they like intense. it's yeah. one thing to be like you know maybe the, like if you're coming you're like maybe use a different song next time but some people were in there like writing novels people and were like I, I my yeah. whole entire personality is being mad at, at Sadie Robertson over my faith has been shook by Sadie Robertson <laughs> and you're like Hey, don't come in hot to Sadie's comment section if 
you know, you, you have an issue with that type of art, but then you go and watch, you know, Dune 2. Or like, it's like, oh, you know, mm. I, I, this art, whatever, listening to this, it's bad, but I, I'll watch this, you know, rated R movie, you know, and it's like, so you're just subscribing to a different type of art that's just as secular, you know? And you to know? that, I would say, which is Dune 2, PG-13, or R. I have no idea. I just threw that out because it's... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, well, there could be very much a thing of Christian conviction, how we could have different convictions, but I think mm -hmm. you would probably say, like... Yeah, there are gray areas. Dancing to Beyonce, if that goes against your conviction, fine, but yeah. you probably don't need to be getting out here and blasting her in the comment section because yeah. it's not a black and white thing. Mm -hmm. And going and seeing Dune, not a black and white thing. I think just like with Beyonce and other artists out there who have just been blatantly blasphemous towards God or, you know, like are known to be incredibly sexual, mm -hmm. have made songs, that whatever, like, I think... Christians are kind of like, why are we even, like, in any way, shape, or form supporting yeah. those artists, like, in their art? If that's the issue people have, I'm, like, down with that. I think when we start getting, like, really, really nitpicky, I feel like Sadie has <laughs> probably the most pure <laughs> yeah. platform. Popular, I feel like people yeah. should, even in their criticism, give her credit. I think there's this just idea among many Christians of what does it look like to one, just be set apart from the world, but two, just avoid worldliness. Do not be of this world, but be set apart by the renewing of your mind. What does it look like in your life to be yeah. set apart from the world? That's interesting. Or what does it look like? What would you say is an example of, of like, these are things that are worldly? We talked about kind of like convictions, uh, but then people treating it like it's a commandment, right? Like, oh, my personal convictions. Uh, the verse on, what's the verse of like, not everything is beneficial, but everything is permissible mm -hmm. type deal. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that addresses a lot of like gray areas. And so for some people, I mean, again, we all have like different upbringings, right? So like if, if you see, let's say, you know, and again, I'm, I'm speculating on your upbringing, you sure, see sure. someone like drinking, they're over 21, whatever, like, oh, that's worldly. Whereas for me, the line, if you will, of like where I, I'm set apart is like if I'm hanging out with you know, some friends or whatever, people who maybe aren't Christians, well, we're not getting drunk. Mm -hmm. You know, we know the limit of alcohol. And I think the first thing of really worldliness is kind of like knowing where your convictions are with the Lord and where your discernment is. Um, now, that's a bit more personal. And you know, understanding can, that that's different for everyone. Understanding that that's different. Now, that's a bit more personal. So, like, people can't really see that when I make a video. What would you say to some of our audience? Because I just know this is going to be the case. Yeah. Some of our audience who watches maybe some stuff you've posted in the past and been like, oh, or watches this. They just said that they listen to secular music mm -hmm. regularly. A Christian shouldn't be having a large digest of secular music. Or Josh cusses sometimes. That is mm -hmm. seems worldly to me. Josh is okay with this. That seems worldly to me. What would your response? I, I think it's, it's like what Bryce said. It's like it's... A very powerful thing to believe that you're the one that has the exact line of convictions and things figured you're out. It's, 100 and you're hundred percent correct. You're so correct of like this is where the line is drawn and like you know essentially you're compromising your your walk with Christ if you're anything but this. It's very powerful to believe that. It doesn't always make it true, uh, and it's most certainly probably not true that you know you have it figured out and everyone else is you know super wrong. I get because I growing up you know super Southern Baptist, but also kind of my parents being strong believers and things of that nature and small town, you know, people are watching. I get kind of the feeling of like, how could they do that? And then how could they, you know, be a Christian? You know, how, how could they, you know, partake in this? I think just from my end, it's just kind of like to the people watching that are like, this guy's so worldly and, and questioning my salvation. It's like people have different perspectives in, in different life situations from you that mold who they are and, and even more so Kind of ref that reflects in their walk with Christ, you know. The problem we run into is oftentimes, and this is kind of where the legalism comes in, it's like it, it's almost never presented as like, hey guys, like this is just a personal conviction of mine. Mm -hmm. Take it. It's, it's always, always this is Bible. If you are a Christian and you do this, yeah. but also we were talking about it too, like what gets views? What oh, gets Oh, now if we're getting into that. Christian, you know, uh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> um, and, and so the, the more explosive the title, the more explosive yeah. the thumbnail, the more black and white. You're going to hell yeah. if you do that. <laughs> and, and it's it's just like, outrageous how much people want to shout that for real though. Right. Like, it right. does feel good 
to tell someone that they're wrong and that <laughs> you're doing better in your own life. Oh, yeah. It feels great. At the end of the day, like what you're bringing up, like I do think that there are points where people have to say like, is this furthering my relationship with Christ or is it hurting it? No. And if you can't, if it is hurting your relationship at all or it's not like, then you got to get rid of it. Yeah. That's bottom line. Love it, dude. Well, how can people support Church Chad slash you personally? Where can they find you? How can they support you? Can you can find... Instagram, it's Church Chad. TikTok, um, you can probably just put in Josh Benson, Josh Benson the rapper, at Sydney Michelle Benson. Yeah. Sydney okay. Michelle Benson. Hello. Uh, she makes great little like lifestyle videos and stuff. <laughs> uh, but then I drag her into my comedic bits. Uh, You've made me more funny over time. We will link nice. all of these links below. How do you guys feel now that uh, you know we've we've hit into some pretty <laughs> deep heavy topics i love we live for this stuff like it's yeah. just it's been like i'm so glad y'all came in town and like i i would like totally hang out with y'all again <laughs> like yeah. i think you guys are awesome and it's like it's really cool to meet other creators and like we don't always have to agree on everything to yeah. like see how incredible people you guys are and like your heart for the lord like i know you guys love the lord i know like you're a great mom you're you're a great yeah. wife husband father and so it's like, I respect you guys, like, from that point. And those are, like, the biggest points alone. And it's like, we'll probably continue to disagree on things, you know. <laughs> um, but I, I appreciate you guys, you know, taking the time so that we can have kind of conversations around this. And, you know, maybe people in my audience will, like, be like, yeah, they make good points. And maybe y'all's audience will be like, maybe that guy's not as bad as we thought. <laughs> yes. You know, we can kind of just... Be a little bit more unified, you we know. We can unite. Yeah. Come on. You guys have been seriously amazing for inviting us into your home with a one month old. <laughs> if someone literally, if someone asked me to do this after one month postpartum, I'd be like, "Are they freaking insane?" Like, no. Language messy. <laughs> Our time with Josh and Sydney was a lot of fun. Still agreeing to disagree on certain things, we walked away with new information and a sense of unity. We hope you feel the same. We think the beef was squashed and a new friendship has begun. Josh did agree he would never make another meme criticizing us. Just kidding. Bring it on, Josh. We can't do this without your support. If you believe in this mission and want to support the project, go to patreon.com slash paulandmorganshow or send a one-time Venmo donation. Links below. Unite, grow, entertain. Behold how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. Psalms 133.1. I go and I tell my haircut lady the same thing every time. <laughs> Me too. I just show her a picture of one of the guys off the bachelorette and I'm like, just do something like this.